Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Greenpeace Century and welcome to my benchmark video of the late 2013 Quad Core Mac Pro. So before we actually start the benchmarks, let's take a look at the specifications of this machine. So this is the Quad Core Mac Pro with the Intel Xeon E5 processor clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, 12 gigs of 1866 DDR3 memory, as well as dual AMD FirePro D300 graphics cards with two gigabytes dedicated GDDR5 memory each, and also 250 gigabyte of PCIe based flash storage. Now this configuration comes in at a price of around $3,000 or euros. But now let's actually start with the benchmarks and first we'll take a look at Geekbench. And I also have to give a big shout out to Primal Labs, the developer of Geekbench, for actually giving me the 64-bit version of Geekbench, a license code for that. So let's start the benchmark right here. So basically Geekbench is a very popular benchmark that especially benchmarks the CPU as well as the memory. So it's not really as GPU reliant as other benchmarks. And this is also where you have to just take the results with a grain of salt because the GPU just isn't tested. And so there can be a big difference, for example, coming from a MacBook to just a Mac Pro that has a dual graphics card built in. So I definitely take that into consideration. So here we then see the results. So we get a single core score of 3,558 as well as a multi-core score of 14,079. Certainly not too bad, but also not too great. So if we, for example, just upload this and uh, then it will open here a browser window and then we can see the score again. So here you see some of the details if you're interested in that. But actually if we are going just to compare it to other benchmark results here, if we go to the Mac benchmark chart, I'll just put this to the side right here and we'll see again, so we got 14,079. And so if we take a look at the region of around 14,000 points and we actually see that even a 21.5 inch iMac with an Intel Core i7 processor at 3.1 gigahertz, at least in terms of benchmark score, outperforms the Mac Pro, which is absolutely insane. Now again, this only takes the CPU into consideration and not the GPU, but still that even the i7 processor in a 21 inch iMac basically outperforms the processor here on the Mac Pro is pretty insane. And also, for example, the MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina with the 2.6 gigahertz i7 also outperforms it and even of course also the 27 inch iMac so that's pretty insane and that's also why I'm kind of disappointed in the performance. Now yes of course benchmarks aren't everything but I just don't see that the Mac Pro is much faster than for example a comparable iMac in terms of also video rendering and so it's a pretty big disappointment in the Mac Pro. But now let's actually take a look at Cinebench and Cinebench definitely has the big advantage that it actually has two separate benchmarks and the first one is just dedicated for the GPU. So we will start this one right here. Now one thing that you have to take into consideration when we are looking at this graphics benchmark here on the Mac Pro is that I'm not 100% sure if actually Cinebench takes into account both graphics cards or if it actually just tests one of the D300s. And there have been various results on the internet going on. Some people say it actually only tests one of the graphics cards. So I'm not quite sure about that, but here we just see the sequence which they'll use just to actually determine the power and performance of the GPU. And then we should have a result pretty soon. And then we also see that the result isn't really that outstanding or great. So now we can actually see that we'll get a result of the OpenGL score is 71.04 frames per second. Now, if we actually take a look here at uh, the browser where we see other graphics cards, then for example, we see that we have an ADI Radeon HD 5770, which is a pretty damn old graphics card that actually scores 57 points. So 71 isn't really that far away. So again, I'm not quite sure if it only tests one of the Fire Pro D300s. I can't really imagine that it tests both because that would be absolutely horrible in terms of performance. But yeah, the graphics seems decent, but not really that great. Now let's actually take a look at the CPU score that we get here from the Xeon quad core processor. So this is looking good and pretty fast and we should have a result in a couple of seconds. Now you also see in the bottom corner here on the actually the dock that this really like maxes out all the cores. And now we actually have a score, so we get a score of 630 points. And if we just 
switch here to the CPU. Then we just see that the Xeon performs relatively similar to, for example, an Intel Core i7 at 2.6 gigahertz, which is 3720QM, or also here the CPU that's actually built into the 27 inch iMac, which is the i7-3770. So again, the iMac in terms of CPU just outperforms the Mac Pro and also the GPU performance isn't really that great. But now, of course, you're supposed to end all videos on a positive note. So let's actually take a look at Blackmagic, this speed test. And this will actually test the speed of the PCIe-based flash storage. So let's give this a go, but I'm pretty sure that this will be pretty fast in terms of speed. So here, first off, we'll have a write speed of around 730 and then we'll get a read speed of almost one gig, so 930, which is pretty insane. So there we just see that the SSD performance on the Mac Pro is pretty sick and pretty insane. So definitely a positive thing to see, but then again, CPU and also GPU performance just isn't especially what I expected. And I honestly have to say, I'm pretty tempted to actually uh, just return the Mac Pro and then just probably get like a 27 inch maxed out iMac because you basically like pay 400 or 500 euros less and you basically get the same performance plus you get a pretty pretty good 27 inch screen with WQHD resolution. So the Mac Pro especially the quad core I think just doesn't really make any sense at all. If you want to get a Mac Pro at least get the 6 core or maybe even 8 core but again the quad core is just doesn't really make any sense. So this will also end the video. I just hope that you still enjoyed it, even though it's kind of also a rant. But I just have to say that I'm pretty disappointed in the performance of the Mac Pro. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Also, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and just for many more tech videos, as well as like the video if you enjoyed this video specifically. Thanks again for watching and I really hope to see you next time.